We're going to talk about a very interesting fundraising drive, and I'm joined by Imam Michael Taylor from Give30. Imam Taylor, um, so Give30, tell me about that. Well, first of all, thanks very much for welcoming me here, Donna. Please call me Michael. All right, thank, okay, you. thank you. Thank you. So Give30 is, um, is a 12-year-old initiative um, in Canada that seeks to raise money uh, for local food banks across the country. All right. Yeah. All right. And it ties into Ramadan. Yeah. And you are the imam of the uh, Islamic Center. Well, no, I am an imam in Kingston. My, my daytime job is, is regional chaplain with Corrections Canada. Ah. But I'm a member of the Islamic Society of okay. Kingston. But I'm a Muslim and a worshiping Muslim and, of course, sub, um, uh, celebrate Ramadan. Right. And yes, the, the Give 30 campaign is linked to Ramadan. The 30 is the 30 days of Ramadan or fasting. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's, a, it's an initiative that, that seeks to encourage people during this holy month to consider others and consider consider um, hunger and poverty in our communities and people are asked to, 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 to give charity during this month to our local food bank here in Kingston. And it does tie in nicely because part of Ramadan is fasting. Yeah. So you fast from day light to day, sun, sunrise to sunset. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically right. dawn to, 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 D dawn dawn to, to, to sunset. Yeah, dawn right, to dusk. right. So the, the, the dawn is a bit before sunrise, but yeah, from early mornings we, we have a meal before we start fasting, and at sunset time we break the meal, uh, we break the fast by having a meal. So yes, it's connected with, with food and eating and, and abstention from food during that time. And what's the logic behind uh, making people go without lunch? Uh, like, like what, what's uh, the, the logic or the, the thinking is? Well, fasting in Ramadan is one of the pillars of Islam, right? So it's, it's a, a thing that encourages people to, to, to consider, you know, really food, right, and sustenance. So where does food come from? You know, it's uh, the, the, the verse in the Quran says, you know, oh, we've prescribed fasting on you so that you may learn, so that you may, that you may learn piety, abstinence, right? So those kind of, of spiritual activities are present in, in the fasting, but they're also the physical aspects of the fasting where we, we know across the world that there are people without food, right? So a fasting person understands or gets a sense of what it is like not to have food, right? Yeah. And, yeah. and and, and, and the, the lesson that one would expect to learn is in by not having food, one might understand what it might be like to, for someone that does not have access to, to, to food regularly. So it's a nice tie-in, and then the food bank is a nice tie-in. Yeah. And one of the other aspects of Ramadan is donating. Yeah. So yeah. it's another aspect of yeah. it. So it's a perfect fit, isn't it? True, true. Yeah. So uh, charity, I think that the, the month of Ramadan is, is a time of year where Muslims um, are very charitable. Um, we are part. We have a, another pillar of our faith around um, a, a kind of a, a, a tax on, on on net worth that's given in the month of Ramadan also. So it's a time really people are active in charitable activities, and charity around charitable giving around food is one of the focus. One of the is the focus of the Give Thirty campaign. Now. I've been to your center, yes. uh, and, and you have an, an open house on occasion. Yes. The food is fabulous. <laughs> it is so good, and uh, you're very welcoming people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The reality of that, though, however, right, is that, yes, the food is fabulous, but I think that sometimes we, we, we as a society, um, forget that there are members or parts of our society that don't have access to that right. food, right? Yeah. And um, the increased use and dependence on food banks for many people in our community, um, it's just been a steady increase over the years. And, 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 and I think that we forget regularly, you know, because we are not impacted by that. Right? Exactly, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it is more than you realize. And I've heard statistics that the average person dependent on a food bank is 10 years old. So yeah, yeah is it just yeah. is, you know it's yeah. it's whole families that, yeah. that have yeah. to depend on yeah. on going to a food bank yeah. or going to Martha's table or yeah. 
much by George or any of those kinds of places. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and I some people it. have called it, you know, that hidden hunger, right? That there are people that are, are working, you know, they're providing for their families, you know, but cannot afford food. You know, the issue of, of, yeah. of disability and pe disability pensions, et cetera, where at the end of the month when you've really like deducted everything, right. the, um, right. the food budget is really shrinking. You know. And then people start whatever's the cheapest to eat. So yeah. so you'll get a lot of pasta, a lot of white bread, just whatever yeah. is cheap. So yeah. it used to be if you saw someone who was overweight, you'd think, well, obviously, you know, eating. No, they're not eating just yeah. fine. Yeah. No, they're filling them filling themselves up the best way they can. They can. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, it's uh, that's going to come back on you, and it's going to come back on our healthcare system and a uh, whole bunch of. Um, things that go with that, yeah. yeah, yeah. But one of the interesting things here in Kingston, so our partner, give th the, uh, the partner with the Kings, the local partner with Give Thirty, is is Partners in Mission, yeah. and they have made a really serious attempt in making sure that you know that there is access to to fresh fruits and vegetables and to ch healthy choices around the food that's actually this distributed at the um, at the food bank so Good. while we, we we would think that you know well you know when with people with limited means might make bad choices around food purchasing the there is a, a an opportunity for food banks while they are providing food for for people that have limited income or limited access to resources to, to buy food the types of food that they that they would 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 provide for people um, lean towards more healthy alternatives. Right. Um, right. The uh, opportunities for fresh fruits and vegetables are also there right. at, with um, Partners and, in Mission. And your fundraising certainly contributes to that, and that's the whole idea. You know, exactly. Michael, I think that there is no other faith group that gets more publicity and more press than Muslims, mm -hmm. and not always the most flattering. Yes. As non Muslim, mm -hmm. What do we get wrong? I, I, I think that opportunities for dialogue, you know, if you look at my name, my name is Michael Taylor, right? Right. so that, that tells right. you something, right? Yeah, right? So my mother's an Anglican, you know, and uh, just uh, earlier this, with, with uh, Christmas time, I, I talked about, you know, like, you know, here I'm in this house and, and there's a Christmas tree, right, in my mom's <laughs> house, right? So I think that opportunities for dialogue, especially between Muslims and Christians, have, have, um, have regularly failed. Um, on both sides, right? Like right. a lot, part of my own work is around Muslim Christian dialogue, and I'm very active in that area. Um, local faith communities here in Kingston, we regularly there's a good interfaith network and and, and, and working together. Um, the, the mosques, the mosque in town regularly invites everyone, and everyone shows mm -hmm. up. Yeah. Muslims attend other faith traditions um, celebrations. So it, it's a human thing, right? Like the dialogue right. piece. How do we, how do we have a conversation that right. would be mutually respectful? Because really, our exposure we, we Saudi Arabia, um, uh, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and and it's almost like full stop. That yeah. that's what it is, and but that's not really it. No. No, well, no. you know, Muslims have been in Canada for generations, right? Right, and, and that's I think it's not one, yeah, it. it's one of the things that that people forget. You know, that really, you know, that 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 being Muslim is being Canadian, also. Yeah, yeah, you know? and the laws of a Canadian law takes precedent yeah. in in. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's I, I I think that 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 many people in our city and can say, well, yeah, I, yes, I know I'm Muslim, right? Um, the, 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 the things that have happened in Kingston around Muslims, yeah. the, uh, the opportunities that, that, that have been provided by our mosque to invite people to attend, the, 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 the yearly celebrations around food and inviting people, you know, the times where there are commemorations, the open houses, etc., is one of the ways that Muslim communities across the country have, have worked towards kind of like lessening the divide, you know, in, in, have worked on, on increasing dialogue and have worked on, on working together to build a better Canada and a, and a more secure Canada for sure. For sure. So, can anybody 
contribute to this uh, this fundraiser? I don't have to be a yeah. member of your congregation no, to do no, this. No. Okay. Last year, we raised a record of $12,000 that went wow. towards uh, Partners in Mission. This year, we're hoping to, to raise even more. That's amazing. How to raise this money, if you go on www.give30.org or give30.ca and just press the next button and to donate. It's, it's so like everything is online, you know, right. you can yeah. you can donate Easy. online for people that don't want to share a, um, a, a credit card number with the local food bank, um, they can write a check. The good thing about Give30 is that there are no administrative fees attached. Um, I am a volunteer, my, and I'm the, the co-lead in Kingston. My co-lead is, is Dr. Mona Rahman. Um, we, we, we are volunteers, we don't get paid, no one gets paid, and the money goes directly to each food bank. Okay. And Give30 has, has relationships with, with food banks across Canada in major cities. We now have a relationship with the New York um, City Food Bank, and all of the donations that everyone makes um, goes directly to the food bank. So Good it's, know. you know, go online, give30.org, and donate, you know. We are also yeah. on Facebook, Give30 Kingston, um, that we're, and we'll be okay. regularly posting um, updates yeah. through the month. And who knows, maybe in our lifetime we will see an end to hunger. We hope so. Yeah. We hope so for sure. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you for hosting me, Donna.